Hey everybody, welcome to Mind Tide. I'm your host Kyle, and today we're going to talk about six tech things that you're probably wrong about. But don't feel bad because you're in good company. Number six, cloud storage versus cloud backup. While people use these terms interchangeably, they are not the same thing. For one, they are not in the sky. That was funnier in my head. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. So let's think of it in terms of file A and file B. With cloud storage, you will only have a file A. File A's home is not on your device, but it will be on a server that is based somewhere else, likely through internet service. But with cloud backup, file A's home is stored on your device, but there is a backup file, which would be file B, stored on that server, which is somewhere else. Number five, storage is a type of memory. Where the misconception is, is the tech industry tried to make it more simple, but it actually kind of complicated this basic principle a little bit. So there's a difference between permanent memory and temporary memory, which storage is referred to as the permanent memory. And memory is referred to as the temporary memory or the RAM memory. Examples of your permanent memory would be like internal, external hard drive, solid state drive, flash drives, and temporary is DDR1, 2, 3, and 4, soon to be 5. How these coincide with one another is this. You have an application saved in your permanent memory. Once you open that application, the entire app isn't in use at once but only using what's necessary at the time. This helps keep things running smoothly because the temporary memory is constantly communicating with the processor. Thus, the more RAM or temporary memory allows more processes to function at once. And if you wanna save some of that temporary memory, then you have to save it to your permanent memory or your hard drive. Because once you turn the computer off, then that temporary memory is gone. Number four, this and this do not equal the same thing. Think of it like a tablespoon and a teaspoon, but not really because those actually still measure the same thing. So think of it more like tomato, tomato. No, that, that's still the same. All right, so like potato and Nelly Furtado. Capital M and capital B equals megabyte or one million bytes. Capital M and lowercase b equals megabit or one million bits. One byte is eight bits. A bit is like the atom of computer processing and data. A zero or a one defines a bit. To define one character of text, you need eight bits. One character equals one byte. So to type OK, that requires two bytes, 16 bits of data. <sighs> but then it goes further. They're not typically used to measure the same thing. Bytes are for data storage, but bits are for bandwidth. Your internet service provider may say 250 megabits per second, but that equals 31.25 megabytes per second. Number three, microwaves and cell phones cause cancer. They just don't. To debunk this one, I want you to ask yourself a question. Why are x-rays dangerous for humans? I'll wait. The answer is wavelength. The shorter the wavelength, the higher the frequency. The higher the frequency, the more energy is being placed into an object when that wave is pointing towards it. And with that, an X-ray's wavelength is at a microscopic level. And then going further, gamma rays are at an atomic level, so that makes them even more dangerous. So if you picture these wavelengths flowing through your body, if you picture a gamma ray or a gamma radiation, those wavelengths are so tiny and they're so small and at an atomic level that if they're flowing through the atoms in your body, they have the ability to disrupt its function and thus the ability to cause mutations and or kill said mutations. Now, if we go all the way to the other end of the spectrum, cell phones use radio waves, microwaves use microwaves. The wavelength range from microwaves to radio waves is approximately one millimeter to 100,000 kilometers. For perspective, that is the tip of a ballpoint pen to traveling two and a half times around the earth, respectively. So thus it's physically impossible for them to cause any disruption with cell function in one's body. And thus, they don't cause cancer. Basically what this is, is people being scared of new technology that they don't understand and then automatically it causes cancer. People still to this day believe that electricity causes cancer. That has never been proven to be true. Number two, being on the phone while you're pumping gas. 
this one bothers me so much because there's been so many times where I'm on the phone with somebody and they'll be like, hey, I got to call you back. And I'm like, why? We are mid conversation right now. What could be more important than this? I got to pump gas. Really? You don't need to click. And I'm like, mm. being on the phone while pumping gas does not start a fire. Static shock starts fires. Phones don't start static shocks. Maybe if your phone explodes because you had a Note 7, but other than that, there's been nothing to prove that a cell phone caused an explosion at a fuel pump. PEI, or the Petroleum Equipment Institute, has it well documented that they have never, ever been able to replicate a cell phone causing a fire at a pump. Because it's not true. But Kyle, why are there signs at the pump that say no cell phone use? Easy answer. People dumb. <laughs> I'm, I'm playing, I'm playing. The National Fire Prevention Association, or the NFPA, needs to err on the side of caution. They have rules that there's no electronic devices to be used at the pump, which with due diligence includes a cell phone. But even they document that cell phones haven't caused any at the pump fires. But what they do caution is the same thing as texting and driving or just being on the phone while driving, is no distractions while you're at the pump. If you're not paying attention, you could be spilling gas all over the place and then go and touch something and then you're there is static shock, which is legit an issue that does cause fires at the pump. Or you could forget that you left the pump in the vehicle and then you pull off and that causes major damage. And number one, companies take old phones to make you buy new ones. This one is on the frequent topic of planned obsolescence. Sure, it's a thing to some degree, but let's really think about it though. If a company is trying to build a brand and they want a strong backing behind that brand, they're going to need to have quality and dependable products. So if they're tanking all their old phones, that is not helping their brand. So it doesn't make sense to them. I'll hear people talk about, I'm not doing this new software update because I know they're putting stuff in there to slow my phone down. No, they're not. So here's what's really happening. They're developing a new phone, right? With that new phone becomes new hardware, and with that new hardware, they're developing new software that is fine-tuned for that hardware. Now, if your phone is over four years old, you have old hardware. Yes, you can put that new software on, but it's not tuned for that, and thus your hardware is gonna run that software slower than this new hardware would. Does that make sense? It's really just the basic principles of technology. As hardware increases, then you can make your software beefier and you can get more things done and in less time. Old hardware just can't keep up with that. Also remember, do they want you to buy the new phone? Absolutely. But it's also just as important to build brand loyalty. And now that I have this platform where people will just come listen to me talk, I'm gonna throw in a bonus that has nothing to do with tech. Trucks and SUVs are not the same thing. Okay? They're just not. An SUV is a sports utility vehicle. A truck is a truck. This is a truck. This is an SUV. This is a truck. This is an SUV. This is a truck. This is an SUV. I'm not having this conversation anymore. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If there are any of these that you would like me to go into further detail about, hit the like button, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. Deuces. Is the elephant heavy? I'm coming back, baby.